Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Rhino McBethel. It's your host. Thank you so kind for being part of the show. We are going to have a great show for you today. Anyway, folks, we have uh, in the house right now with us Eric Hayes, Bruce Spollard, Bridge MCP, May Wood, AVQ, the one and only El Senor Michael Rudnick. And of course, there is the first person to check in today, our beautiful Yvette Avery Herod. And Yvette, it seems like you pass the bill. It seems like you passed the bill, or in the, hear me, pass the bill. I accepted the, uh, the the thing. If you have the wherewithal to call us in and give us your personal update, what you think about how the vote went, I think it was like 85% or something like that, 281-823-7747. I would love to hear your lovely voice if you are able to do so, 281-823-7747. I'd like to hear your thoughts and how people are feeling now that they, it seemed to me, my, the impression that I have, based on everything that I've read so far, like it seems like this was one of those good union deals. I could be wrong, but that's what it seems to me. You didn't get absolutely everything you wanted. I think we should have gotten all air, all buses air conditioned. We didn't. So anybody want to give me a call? 281-823-7747. Love to hear your story if you have one. To tell anyway, welcome aboard. Bruce says also Houston Public Radio had a good spot on expanding Medicaid. Maybe you want to call us and tell us a little bit about what they said on that particular program. Lee Grant is in the house. Hey, Lee Grant, how are you doing today? Great to hear from you. Uh, who else did anybody else show up as I was speaking? Anyhow, let's go to reading what you have to say. Hey, E2247, like likewise, is in the house. Okay. Let's get started. Uh, Bruce says, another day of century degrees. Yes, it's 101. M-Man was on public TV yesterday, says it is not too late. <clears throat> no matter what the cause, we can slow it down. Yeah, we can always slow it down. Uh, there are just some issues, though, man, that uh, we may have to go through some tribulation, just the laws of thermodynamics. That ocean has been absorbing a lot of the heat. You know, um, there is this thing, you know, the, uh, the one thing with water, water has this property that it can hold a whole lot of heat. Let's go ahead and talk to our wonderful Yvette Avery. How you doing, Yvette? Whoops. Can you hear me, Yvette? Yeah, there we go. It's a little scratchy, Yvette. Can Let's, you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you now. How you doing okay. today? Oh, I'm just beating the heat. How are you? I know. It's really, really hot out there in Atlanta, right? Yes, it is. Yeah, I can imagine. Yes, is, sure. is is your is your unit air conditioned? Your not your unit, your um your cab air conditioned? Uh no, and it won't be I'll probably never see air conditioned for at least about another ten, fifteen years. Oh my it god. Written, a lot of us oh. see it. Yeah. Well you'll be retired by then, at least you'll have a great retirement by then. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> anyway, tell for us sure. uh, tell us a little bit about how did it go? How did the vote go and so forth? Um, I was kind of surprised. I know, you know, I had issues with uh, a contract that I wanted to be worked out before, you know, mm -hmm. it was ratified. I mean, we still have uh, one supplement that's not, that voted no. So uh -huh. we're still in limbo for now until that's negotiated and they turn it to a yes. But yeah, definitely oh. wanted some things fixed before it was ratified, but the people have spoken, so... We'll have to deal with those things for the next five years. And wait, wait. Let me see if I understand. Years. Wait, I, I think I misunderstood something. Uh, is a is the is the contract between UPS and the union ratified? Is it official now? Well, not really, because we still have one group that voted no. So everybody else voted yes, and one group voted no. So uh -huh. until that one group out of Florida uh, gets to a yes. It won't be officially ratified yet. Oh, okay. I don't know if the article I read made that clear. Now, does it seem like that group would, in the long run, get some votes changed to make it a yes or not? Not sure, because that's such a small group. Uh -huh. I didn't even realize they were there. <laughs> so okay. it's a really small group, but they are part of the airline division uh -huh. in Florida. Um, so 
Yeah. Yeah. We shall see. How close was that vote? Was it uh, near 50-50 or? Um, Because it was only less than like 200 people in the group. So it's not a lot of people. And I think a hundred and something voted against it. And maybe I won't get my numbers wrong, but yeah, it was because I'm not looking at them, but Uh it wasn't a, um, a big, big difference, but still one. They have right. Worked out. Wow. Well, I I hope that gets settled. Now, let me ask you your impression now. Now that the bill, the the, the uh, contract is fast, even though you didn't get everything that you got or that you wanted, are you comfortable with the contract? I am not, but I mm-hmm. really have no choice at this point. Okay. I'm definitely not. Uh, they okay. created um a new two tier for our part time workers. Uh huh. Which the ones that come in. Since August 1st, they all only receive a $2 raise over the entire five years of the contract, while everybody else gets the other raises, which I don't think is, you know, fair. As a union, we should all get the same raises. We shouldn't have created another tier after we just got rid of one tier. So now we've created another two tier. Um, but like I said, we'll have to deal with that until five, five years, years from now. And maybe try to remedy that. Um, me, myself, I, of course, I get a... a a better deal because I'm no longer 22 four. I'll be crossed over as a regular package car driver, but I won't have the overtime protections that everybody else has. Uh, if I would have crossed over before August 1st, I would have had them, but because I waited, um, I won't get those same protections. So I know the company will continue to use that as a harassment tool. So it's, there's some things in there that, like I said, I wish could have got, you know, tightened Cleaned up a little up. bit just to, you know, help us out. But the people have spoken, so we will continue on and fight as we can with the language that we have. Now, let me ask you one last question then. But as far as you're concerned, your situation, you're you, you are very concerned about the, the people that are going to be coming in behind you as a two-tier system. But Correct. for your particular condition, you are pretty much getting the same raises, the standard drivers, the, the driver. Well, but you're a standard driver now. So the, the raise that they've gotten, Correct. Yes, I'll get the the raises now that they have, just not all the protection. Okay. When you say protection, what exactly does that mean? So it's an overtime protection, what we call 9-5. So any hours worked over nine and a half hours Uh during the day, um, if they violate that at least three times a week, there's a penalty that they have to pay. You know, we're Uh, trying to create a work-life balance. But I don't have that option. Um, because it's some loopholes, I would have to probably wait another year before I qualify for that. Uh, unless something drastically changes uh, as far as how they um, distribute the work through the week. Because I'm a Tuesday through Saturday driver. Okay, um, so they can like force said, you to work as well. So, so. Got you. Got yeah, you. They can work me my, my 14 hours every day <laughs> and Got you. no repercussions. Got you. Uh, yeah. well, and you said you have one year that you have to tolerate that. At least, uh, because I have to, the, the loophole is you have to be at least full time, four years, uh-huh. which I'm in year three, right. or work the same uh, route for a whole week, which is impossible. The way our schedules are set up, they only right. have the same routes Monday through Friday and Saturday is different. So I would never qualify under that. Right. So you have to wait for the four years. I mean, they calculate all of that based on the number of people you have running. But look, thank you very much for calling in. Um, you know, I, I really appreciate no I really appreciate you giving us this update. OK. Thank you so much. Thanks, Yvette. Anyway, folks, that that was right. Yvette Avery Herod. Our um, she is a union steward. In other words, she's one of the folks who rile up the folks to, for for negotiating these contracts, etc. With UPS, like I said, everybody didn't get everything that they wanted. I am happy for her that she got financially taken care of, but she spoke about the environment as far as uh, having time off, etc. That part wasn't worked out the best for everybody, just for some. Anyway, thank you very much for calling it, Yvette. Uh, let's see. We have Eric Hayes says, Texas Supreme Court denies Harris County's request to block law returning election administration to elected officials. Harris County, yeah, I saw that. My friend, he's uh, you You saw when I interviewed him here on, on, um, on Politics Done Right. 
they are going to try their best to continue appealing this decision. You can't appeal past the Supreme Court of the Texas Supreme Court in Texas, but you can take it to uh, federal courts and do it under a, uh, you can, you can more than likely file it under the voter uh, VG, the VBA, the voter register. What is it? Voter protections or I can't remember what it is. I think it's VBA voter something, something I'll figure it out sometime. All right, let's see. Bruce says, also, Houston Public Radio had a spot on expanding Medicaid. If you want to call us and tell us about that, that would be great. Uh, Eric Hayes says, the Wall Street Journal reported Wednesday that Hawaiian Electric, the biggest power supply in the state, focused on shift, shifting to renewable energy sources to combat climate change rather than spend money to address fire risk around the power, its power line. Uh, you know, um, I, find, I find it astounding how... Uh, uh, how many can use just about every situation to attack climate change uh, uh, provisions? In other words, uh, er- if you listen, to, if you listen to what Eric says many times, they try every oh because it, because they were fighting climate change, they didn't take care of mitigation mi- mitigating uh, something that would have stopped the fires. That's BS. All they needed to do is turn the power off. They knew high winds were coming. Turn the power off. That's all it would have taken. No, let me tell you what I'd like to happen now, Mr. Eric Hayes. Nationalize the damn electric grid in, uh, in, in Hawaii. It's proven that the private sector has issues dealing with, with, um, with some of these things. Nationalize the darn thing. You guys are always talking, talking, but you're not making scientific sense. You have to realize that all these issues are based on money. And making sure that they can maximize money for a few. Again, uh, Eric, that uh, I'll I'll put this as kind as I can. Uh, you can you see the earth burning when your home in Kingwood gets flooded out when the high pressure leaves us, and a hurricane gets in here that is larger than normal because of the overheated ocean. I don't want to hear your voice. I don't want to hear you seeking pity. I don't want you to talk about anything other than that the people that you support have been irresponsible, have been immoral, and have caused the harm to our earth, not just country, but our earth. I want you to remember that. E2247 says, Lawrence Tribe on MSNBC tonight with Lawrence O'Donnell. Uh, Thank you for letting us know that uh, about RICO case to federal court. Thank you for that as well. All right. Michael Rudden says, a transcript from the PBS News Hour discusses extreme summer weather as heat wave brings more record highs. Thanks for the article. Uh, Bridge MCP is welcoming in. Melanie Keelan is in the house. Welcome aboard, Melanie Keelan. Uh, I think he, I didn't see you this morning. No, I didn't see you this morning. Eric Hayes, eighty-five percent right. Don't know what you're talking about. Uh, let's see. Parvet, parvet, parvet. Paul Fleming says the far right seems dead set on crashing our economy. They are openly refusing to fund the government unless their absurd demand list is met, which includes one: let Trump walk; two: end woke U.S. military policy. The last time the government shut down, it cost the uh, the U.S. eleven billion dollars. These guys don't care about that. They are just irresponsible irresponsible i won't say the word all right uh let's see what else we got here eric Hayes says wonder if layoffs are coming from the raise in pay don't know what you're talking about anyway let's see part of it 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 bridge mcp says all right the e 2 says bridge that requires secretary of state for each state will actually grow a backbone and determine to keep the frauds off the state ballot i mean i wish they would but i doubt they will Breed says, I have hopes E2247, many blue states. California already wants to do it. That that movement is growing, but we need red states. We need red states. Otherwise, it doesn't change electoral college makeup, etc. Bruce, uh, replying to Bruce says, so far, 90% of my home energy is from my solar panels. I cool to 75 degrees. All are welcome 
to Houston. Ah, there you go. Boy, I, you're down to 75. That's pretty good. Lee Grant says, check out Vivek Raswamy in tonight's Republican debate. He's a true anti-wokeness candidate. He's actually a fool. And I don't speak like that generally, but he is a genuine, genuine fool. When you listen to what he has to say, uh, just as a, a, a minute, a bit of logic, Shows you that he's just an, an empty suit. Who, well, you know, again, he's a he's a stock market kind of a guy and uh, made money on on. Um, I forgot the kind of drug companies or whatever. Again, but he, he has nothing really upstairs that produces anything. Again, he knows how to move money. Seems like those are the ones who take off in our country. Sad. Bridge MCP says Jesus is a woke as woke. Yes, he is. Have an issue with that, Lee? York's right. Uh, let's see. We say. Uh, Egberto, I don't know what VBA is. Is a voter VR? Uh, it, it may not be VBA. It's a voter something. It's a, it's it's a part of the the uh, the law. It's a part of the civil rights law. I uh, can't remember the name. I'll, I'll think about it. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Um, Bridge MCP says he won't, Michael. Daniel Edo says, and to leftist, every weather event is proof of global warming. No, but you can actually make uh, the conglomeration of what occurs and see what's going on. And then you can use some scientific modeling to prove it. But again, for that to work, we have to hope that we've taught our people science in school. But what our high schools are doing are, are, are trying to defer from uh, teaching real science and instead having a whole bunch of folks who know nothing of what they speak have a big voice. Fox News, Newsmax. Paul Fleming says, today like good uh, today seems like a good time to remind you the Section 3 of the 14th Amendment bars anyone from holding office who has engaged in insurrection against the United States of America, and that includes Donald Trump. I agree. Uh, let's see. Eric Hayes says, oh, you will hear it. Construction and flood mitigation mismanagement by commissioners court will be the cause. No, it will be you. It will be you, Mr. F Mr. Hayes. It would be you voting a whole bunch of Neanderthals into office, sir. And I must call them Neanderthals because that is the definition of not using uh, of the, the thought process that they use, not a modern thought process. All right, let's go. Michael Ronin said, Egberto, one up for the screen. Air quality. Okay. If you ask, so shall it be. Let's go ahead and get that to the screen for Brother Rodnin. And here we go. I think I have it on the screen. Uh, and what is that about? Let's see. Egberto for one. Air quality now. U.S. government pays. See all the fires. Yep. We can see all the fires throughout the United States and Canada. I didn't realize there was so much fire in uh let's see oh wow that looks nasty all right thank you for giving that uh let's see yvette avery harrod says yes dot stops us at 14 wow the department of transportation says you can only work 14 hours a day okay uh let's see what else we got robert davenport welcome robert greeting progressives republic clown elected officials do not love america more than they lust for fascist authoritarian control of everything we hold there you know, uh, there there is a actual um, mental thing that goes with that, but I don't want to put it out there for very specific reasons because it creates more debate than it's worth, right? All right, VRA, Voting Rights Act. Thank you, Rudden, not VVA, VRA, Voting Rights Act. I got the best team. That's all I can tell you. I've got the best team. You're right. It's VRA, Voting Rights Act. Thank you, sir. Uh, Daniel Ledo says, hello, I like Berto requires his chosen candidates are smart. Explain your support for Biden. Biden is actually a pretty smart dude. Actually, uh, if he weren't this smart, I don't think he would he would be able to get the things that he got through through. Now, not every smart person, I value their values, but I've learned to value a lot of President Biden's values because it turns out that he followed the progressive mantra. All right. Bruce Pollard says this might be a phone conversation. If there is high inflation with no recession, does that indicate something besides printing money is the root cause? Yes, absolutely. Look, printing money 
gives the plutocracy, the oligarchy, the peoples, the titans of finance, because there's money available, they can choose to steal it, irrespective of the availability of stuff. Let's give an example. Oil. And if you want to call in, you can call in as well. But let's give an example of oil, all right? There is no shortage of oil, right? But OPEC knows that there's money on the market. They will select, because there is a, a, a quasi-monopoly on oil, right? We can't, if, if all these cartels get together and form a monopoly, I can't create some new company that somehow, according to the supposedly free market system, I can't say, okay, now that these guys are restricting oil and, uh, and cause the price of oil to go up because they're creating false shortages, even though there's none, I can't go drill to break their backs and force oil prices back to the balance between supply and demand. I can't do that, right? Because again, it's a cartel and there's no regulation. This is why I always talk about this stuff about free markets and capitalism is a failure. It's an absolute failure. And I want to I want to take up a little bit more time with Bruce's statement because it's very important. Bruce says, if there is high inflation with no recession, does that indicate something besides printing money is the root cause? Yes. And it is important for us to understand what that is. And what that is, is the corporations who chose, who chose to raise prices, not because of shortages, but because they can. And since they don't have any, any competition of choice, that occurs. Now, there's another thing that can occur as well, right? Because it's not regulated, this could happen. We could have, we already, uh, we already said there's no shortages. But everybody who comes on the market could say, ah, Exxon is charging $5 for gas. I'm going to come on the market and also charge $5 for gas. And assuming, uh, you know, I am making some money. I mean, if, if, if prices are high enough. It doesn't matter if your sales are real low, if, if you have a high profit margin. The model doesn't work. The model is not, they, they try to give you the impression that it, it solely depends on supply and demand. That's false. Supply and demand can play a role when there are shortages. But if there is ample supply of what people want, inflation is only caused by greed. And the ones that have the greed are the ones who have the wherewithal to produce. This is not rocket science. And, and it, it, we saw it happen. It's what happened during the pandemic. During the pandemic, it happened. Uh, uh, Stephanie Kelton talks about this. Not only Stephanie Kelton, economist Stephanie Kelton, but uh, Katie Porter proved it with her graphs, uh, exactly what caused our inflation this time around. And it's it's 100% due to either corporate greed, about a little bit over half percent corporate greed, and the other half, or the, less, the other less than half, is caused by corporate incompetence. In other words, putting all your eggs in one basket, creating a just-in-time inventory, all these things that they do for short-term efficiency gain and bonuses are exactly the things that screwed us and caused what we have, inflation, the inflation that we have. It's not bad inflation, as some people would like to say. It is, it is exactly caused by the corporate class who, again, they don't really have much upstairs. They don't create anything, but they do create inflation. All right. Robert Davenport says, remove the map, please. Okay, I think I've seen it long enough. There we go. There to go. There goes the map, Robert Davenport. Michael Rodney says, as it comes to global warming 2023, 
is on a record-breaking pace in Texas and around the world. On land and sea and air, Texas Tribune, the summer is on track to be among Texas's most extreme. And I am seeing it and I'm paying for it. Bridge MCP says, very sad. Jimmy and Rosalind Carter entering final days in health update. They're still holding hands. It's just amazing. The former president grandson said Saturday. I love that couple. Uh, Donald, uh, I mean, um, Donald Trump uh, looks like Lucifer. Like Lucifer's uh, to the nth degree next to uh, next to him. All right, let's see. I will test this theory on our way right friend. I will test this theory on our way right friend. Okay, you're talking about, uh, I know who you're talking about. I mean, we can actually sit down and have some coffee over this because I can go through the machinations with him. All right, let's see what else we got here. Paul Fleming says, every public school student in Massachusetts will get a free lunch thanks to proceeds from a new state tax on millionaires. California, Colorado, uh, Maine, Michigan, Minnesota, New Mexico, and Vermont have also passed legislation to permanently provide free school meals for children. Poverty is a policy choice. Don't you love all those who truly believe in humanity? Thank you for letting us know that, Paul. Eric Hayes said, Berto, there were shortages as our administration sold off the reserves, so there were shortages from where we started fossil-wise. That's a silly statement. Eric Hayes, please go check your numbers. There were never shortages. Again, shortages were manufactured. We are swimming in oil. That's not a, qu- that's not a question. That's a fact. All right. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Maywood says Eric Hayes cares about flood and doesn't realize fossil fuel burn and accumulate atmospheric carbon. No, they know it. They just, they just, they just are willfully ignorant, sir. Uh, Robert Davenport said, Eric, can you be anything other than a talking point troll ever? Have you ever had an original thought or opinion? So very, very sad. I mean, it disturbs me. It disturbs me that that there are people that Eric represents a certain class of people. That, in effect, you're exactly right about that, Robert Davenport. But what can I say? Uh, Eric Hayes says, Egberto, what is happening in the Panama Canal now as it's going uh, to cause shortages? Well, the Panama Canal has some water issues because the rain. we have two seasons, dry season, rain, rain season. And there are two lakes that control the canal. It's called Gatun Lake, which was the largest lake in the world for quite a largest man-made lake in the, in, the, in, the, in the world for a while. And then that one is fed by Madden Lake. Okay, And Madden Lake, they're both have issues with water because the patterns of rain, etc., have changed. It doesn't help that we can allow the big, big ships to go through more, and it takes a lot more money. We use some flood, some water mitigation issues with the new flood gates, but it's going to be still difficult. Daniel Edo says, Hello, Alegberto is on a tier today calling folks stupid. I never called anybody in this forum stupid, nor do I call the average American citizen stupid. I said they're ill-informed. Usually this tactic is used when one cannot debate merits on issues. Please tell me which de- which issue you that I fail to be able to debate on that I speak about. I think you'll f- you'll realize that you uh you you fail miserably. In fact, I would say Mr. Ledo for having a mouth that constantly talk very well and you know you're my I, I like you. You should call and 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 have this debate that you want to talk about over on the telephone. There are a lot of people who are keyboard warriors, but when it is time to think critically, they refuse to do it or they refuse to exercise the ability to speak critically to someone else. So Consider doing it, my friend. All right. Paul Fleming says, next year, the IRS is plotting uh, uh, piloting an online direct file program to make filing taxes easy, quick, and free. But big tax prep is spending millions to limit taxpayer choices and protect their profits. We should make government work better for Americans, not special interests. I agree. There's no reason for TurboTax and all these guys to collect the money for the government or to, to do the calculations for the government, right? That's one level in direction that's unneeded. You're right about that. Uh, E2247 says, Egberto, we want rocket science too. Please give us some. Yes, we love. I love rocket science. So are we talking about India uh, uh, landing a craft on the moon while Russia, I think, crashed into the moon? Pretty interesting, right? Uh, Bruce Pollard says, how are we going to change the world so uh, so people will not kill others when they are ordered uh, to do it for cultural, racial, or religious differences? We have to love on each other. In other words, I mean, let's look in here, right? 
uh, we're talking to each other. We like uh, we can fight among each other. We can not fight, but discuss among each other, uh, rib each other, etc., etc., etc. But we're not going to kill each other in here. And you know, we have somebody like um, like Brother Lado who you know gives a lot of commentary in here. But again, he's in here talking, and I think I think look, I'm, I'm, I'll be just honest with you. I like everybody in the room, right? Everybody in the room. So we, we, one of the things that I want to promote is we're supposed to be able to have healthy discussion, healthy, strong discussions without thinking that we need to uh, kill each other. The psychopaths of the world have a tendency to uh, give, give some uh, temporary insanity that allows them to do that. Bruce, and that's what I think we have to get away from. All right, uh, Macron says, Egberto, as it comes to the strategic reserve, conservatives will conflict crude oil and refined gasoline. The only they are, the two are not the same. Uh, put in crude oil in a global market lowers refined gasoline prices, which is what Biden tried to do to alleviate the BS greedflation uh, that corporations have engaged in. The corporations are just evil. That's it, right? Daniel Lido says, You just dismiss corporate CEOs as dumb. Yes, they generally are. I'm sorry. If you do the things these corporate CEOs do, what else could you possibly say, sir? Right? If you go ahead and and get all your textile mills out of South Carolina and take it to China and wonder why there's a shortage of cotton if there is a pandemic, how dumb is that? Right? You took short-term gain to harm the country as a whole. That's why, you know, that's what I say. People look at absolute efficiency as solutions. Absolute efficiency is not, sir. Whoa, we should call you propaganda supreme if you want to, please. Okay, so pro- propaganda supreme. All right. Okay, Paul Fleming says, if the indictments were happening, we could uh, be talking about Clarence Thomas. We should be talking about Clarence Thomas should be indicted as well, you know. But I think he's protected against that now. Bruce says, uh, killing people when they cross a river or putting things in their way is the same thing. I agree. I agree. Uh, but, you know, again, our, our evangelicals somehow don't see it that way. Michael Rodney says, as it comes to taxes, why doesn't the government check how much you paid versus how much you owe, then send you a receipt to confirm how much your return should be? It's because tax prep companies bribe Congress to keep the broken system we have where they can get paid to act as a necessary middleman. You nailed it. Uh, Robert Davenport says a gauntlet drop Lado, speak up and I will listen to your voice and consider the truthful facts that support your argument. There you go. Lado, CEOs are dumb. Let me guess. Leftists are smart. Not all leftists are smart, but I tell you what, uh, they actually at least try to learn. You know, I mean, when I don't know something, I try to learn when I'm corrected. I come and I say, hey, I was wrong and I did it wrong. But anyhow, here is a lady who called into our show a couple of days ago, uh, concerned about her 401k. I want you to listen to this. I was supposed to play this one yesterday. So let me go ahead and play this one today and check this out, my brothers and sisters. We currently have Josie on the line. Please come on in, Josie. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Um, first thing I have, I did contribute about three weeks ago, and I will continue to contribute as, as I can because I really enjoy your show. And I think. Look, I want to thank you so really kindly. Important. I, I thank you so kindly. We couldn't do it without you. And like I tell folks, I, I contribute what you can. If you can't, that's understood. We still want everybody. Talk to me, my friend. So the other thing is women. Yes. I never hear women calling in. And I'm one of those women that didn't. This is my third time. To, once I attempted, but I couldn't get in. Mm-hmm. But this is my second time to be able to really talk to you. But I want to just say what you're saying is so important about Social Security and the 401k. I'm 71. Most of my retirement will be in 401k. I don't know that I'll be able to, I'm still working because I don't know that I'm going to be able to support myself with those 401k because those go up and down. And it's really important for us to know what they are and what has happened to us and our retirement, no more pensions. You know, we were more secure with pensions than we are with this mess with the 401 k that we have to worry about and, and watch every second to see if we're going to be able to retire. That is ridiculous when we've worked as long as we have. I think it's really important 
to also get the message of what can we do? Like, how can we make that better for our grandchildren, great grandchildren and on? Do, you know, what's the answer to that? I am glad that you asked that. But first of all, let, let's talk a little bit about 401ks. Uh, 401ks was just a way for companies to get away from having the responsibility of taking care of its of the employees after they've left. Now, please don't take offense to this, but while the masters in the olden days, in the days of slavery, had to keep their 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 people clothed and fed and healthy because they were capital, they were capital that had to be taken care of. And if they are damaged, that was on the owner of that capitals, you know, they're damaged, but employees are the new ones that no longer have to be clothed, fed or kept. So there was a time that negotiated pensions were there because it was necessary to hold on to employees, et cetera. But as time went on, they found ways to absolve themselves of that. You are going to solely be responsible for you, irrespective of what you're paid. And that's where the 401k came in, right? We give you money for your 401k or you save money for your 401k. If you do well, fine. If not, you know, it's, it's, it's an expense. The company doesn't have to worry about anymore, but here's the kicker, my dear yeah. Josie, that's where government comes in. In my humble opinion, a government is there to protect us all. And we are the government. And what we should have is a social security shouldn't be a backstop to savings. A social security should be a living wage after you have reached social security age. After you have stopped working, everybody should have a minimum amount of money that determines what living conditions uh, the minimum living conditions. That's what every American should be entitled to. That's what a society should be. And you shouldn't have had to worry about putting away your money for savings. In. There's a reason for creating a society. When you work, you are create, you're, you're making that society for the billionaires. In fact, there shouldn't be billionaires, but you are the ones who are creating that wealth. So that, that is a reality. Now here's a solution. The solution is for us to be educated and not allow us to fool ourselves. I have somebody in the chat saying, save your money and all that kind of stuff. What they don't understand is saving your money is not enough. What they don't understand is the, the, the concept of a living wage, whether you're working or after your working age is what's called humane. It's what's called humanity. And it's a reason for society and it helps everybody. It's not any, it's not somebody living on the dole. It's just a natural progression. You're born, your parents take care of you. You live, you work. And after your working years, you're again, uh, society takes care of you again, right? It is just a humane thing to do. And what we have to do is elect people and we can do it elect people who believe in humanity over capital and any day we start electing people who believe in humanity over capital we start to see that the policies change there is money in this market that everybody can work their 40 or 50 years span and then after that live a good life it's yeah. there let me tell you it's not about hope it's about what we are going to do and what we should do, Josie, is vote in the right people and not fall for the what I call the rugged individualism fraud. We cannot fall for the rugged yeah. individualism fraud. OK, anything else, vote, Josie? Vote, vote. That is all. Thank you. I appreciate your show every morning. Thank you so kindly, Josie. You have a wonderful day. Yes, we need to get away from the rugged individualism fraud because that's what it is. Even those who like to preach it cannot live it in the long run. Uh, Robert Davenport says, I hope I make it to 71 Josie, uh, uh, like Josie has. America needs to create a decent life uh, affordable for seniors. Egberto is correct. Thank you, my brother. Eric says, Egberto, you can change jobs anytime. So look out for you. Uh, wow. No, I have no, I, I don't have an intention of changing jobs if I can avoid it because my goal is to help, help us have an education on uh, the way things really work to make sure that we don't fall for the right wing corporate driven 
uh, minutia. That's my goal. Uh, Jesus was a rugged individualist. That is so far from the truth. Jesus had seven disciples. Jesus uh, went. Uh, uh, Jesus destroyed the the, uh, the the capitalists on the Sabbath. Jesus uh, made sure that uh, when uh, when Jesus came to folks' house, he said, "You've denied me." So look, I could tell you stories of Jesus after Jesus after Jesus. Not that I'm a religious guy. I'm not. But Jesus was not an individualist. Jesus loved people. Jesus went, he fed 12,000 people with a bread. Well, you know, that's what that's how the story goes. All right. Uh, for my right thinking friends here on PDR, I can offer large discounts on bulk ammo purchases. All you leftists can go pay full price. Oh, really? Oh, you're going to give me a break, huh? All right. Uh, let's see. Egberto teach some financial literacy, not ideology. I teach financial literacy. I mean, everything I said is financially accurate. All right, Bridge MCP. The left has gone to, uh, gone to mo- what? Uh, the left have guns too, moron. <laughs> Yes, they do. All of my, I mean, most of my leftist friends are are armed. Uh, let me just tell you that. So let's let, let let's try something with them. It's not going to work. Jesus and Vivek are both non-white. What does that mean? Uh, e two two four says I am with Michael Rudnan on how DL showing two of his core priorities. There you go. All right, now the video to show you. This one is Minnesota Governor uh, Tim Walz. Love this guy. Watch how he does shade on the debate for good reason check this out and then we'll take it on the other side you got to love governor tim walls the democrat of minnesota governor uh tim walls democrat of minnesota i mean the democrats in minnesota with one vote they codified abortion rights paid family and medical leave sick leave transgender rights protection driver's license for undocumented residents restoration of voting rights for people when they are released from uh, prison or jail wider voting access one-time rebates a tax credit aimed at low-income parents with kids a billion dollar investment in affordable housing i mean on and on and on and go all these things were done by a a small democratic majority a democratic governor in other words words, the entire state is controlled now by Democrats and the people can feel it. They made it happen. Well, uh, Governor Tim Walz appeared on with Chuck Todd and Chuck Todd, after speaking to him about the Republican debate, pointed out that his good friend, the adjacent governor, uh, didn't have much to uh, was actually endorsed, sort of endorsed by this Democratic governor, Tim Walz, because uh, he just wanted to say of, of this entire pack of people running, this is the best that the Republicans have to offer. And he's a good guy. But I want you to understand and I want you to see how Tim Walls walk the rope, the tight rope, being nice with uh, with a Republican for the humanity, but at the same time, ribbing him very hard because his th- this this uh, Republican candidate is just as MAGA with the things that he's saying from a six-week abortion ban to quite a few other things. Check out how Tim Walls take care of it, and then we'll take it on the other side. And by the way, Bergham got an unusual endorsement at the Iowa State Fair last week from a Democrat, Governor Tim Walls of Minnesota. Walls said, I'm not a Republican, he told the New York Times, and I'm not going to vote in the Republican primary. But if I did, I'd vote for him. Well, Walls was in Iowa as a surrogate for President Biden, and he joins us now representing the Biden campaign. Governor Walls, uh, didn't mean to sandbag you there with your Doug Burgum endorsement, um, <laughs> but you guys are neighboring governors. Um, quickly explain your working relationship with him. Yeah, well, Doug is a friend, and I, I'm, it, it's kind of sad to me to hear that interview you did, which was a good one, asking all the hard questions. We've worked together on really important things that governors do, whether that's a, a flood diversion around uh, Fargo to to make sure that the seasonal floods of the Red River don't uh, don't hit, and then agricultural issues. But but look, uh, Doug wouldn't answer the questions that need to be answered. And you were asking what's going to come out of this debate. Um, the minute they all step on the stage, the American people have lost. Are they going to debate who can ban the most books? Who uh, uh, you know, Doug 
it, he didn't tell you this, but he signed a six week abortion ban, which is hugely unpopular and simply wrong in America. So, yeah, we're friends, but uh, I hate to see it go down this road. Those are very simple questions about you were asking about the president, about the indictments. And so uh, I was uh, a little bit tongue in cheek. And the sad part is I do believe that, that Doug is probably the most normal of these. That's a pretty weird group of folks going to be on the debate stage. But, Doug's a pretty right. good guy, but he's trapped in a Republican Party with no ideas. Tim Walls nails it. He doesn't let the uh, governor uh, get away with it. He goes ahead and he points out that in as much as he's a good guy, I uh, remember that's a weird group of people that are running, running for president. And if this is best you can do, hey, well, it's OK. It's the best you can do. But again, Tim Walls with what he's done prove when Democrats and progressive Democrats are in charge. What are the things that can get done to actually help people? The humane kind of policies. Actually, that's right. The humane kind of policies. Exactly right. Uh, Robert Davenport says, I'm a leftist progressive and an excellent marksman. I just don't think I need a machine gun. I would love a 50 caliber sniper rifle, but sure don't need it. I hear you, brother. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Hey, Lee. Yo, why don't you also push and promote Oliver Anthony's mentor, Jason Aldean? Try that in a small town. Yeah, they, they, you know, they're coming out with these things and, oh, they're trying to start. A, um, look, these guys are full of it. Okay, let's continue. Let's continue. Uh, uh, we have another video for you. This one here is from uh, Republican Senator. Uh, wants Donald Trump to get out of the race, but if he wins and he's a felon, ah, I guess I'll still vote for him. I tell you the lack of morality, check this out. If you want to see the responsibility, if you want to see the lack of morality, if you want to see outright degeneracy in a nice face, in a pleasant narrative, you just have to listen to uh, Cassidy, Senator Cassidy, out of Louisiana. Why? Uh, he claims that he does believe that Donald Trump is guilty. And he think that the paperwork, the, the, the where he kept on uh, uh, the, the papers that he held on to, he said, that's a slam dunk. It seems like that's a slam dunk to keep all the, the classified records. And he also thinks that maybe where they have him on tape claiming that, uh, you know, get me more votes also likely make him guilty. So Cassidy says, with a straight face, I think he should drop out of the race. Anybody on the stage that goes ahead and support Donald Trump, anyone on the stage supporting Donald Trump in, the, in any of these debates would make a better candidate than Donald Trump, a better president than Donald Trump. Great. So far, that sounds pretty good. I want you to listen to what he says there and what he says thereafter, because it's the thereafter that shows that these folks have no morality, no soul, no real patriotism, no interest in a country moving forward in a positive direction. I want you to listen to this and then we'll take it on the other side. Let's talk now about the presidential race. Donald Trump, the former president, he is facing federal charges uh, over his efforts to overturn the election. And you did vote to convict him in his impeachment trial after January 6th. You said, quote, because he is guilty. Uh, the former attorney general, Bill Barr, says that the, the charges that have been brought against him are, quote unquote, responsible. Uh, do you agree? Well, I'm not an attorney. There's 91 charges, I think. I think the charge that seems most likely, I mean, seems almost a slam dunk, is the one related to mishandling of classified documents. So, um, uh, so I, I can't comment on the rest of them because apparently you have to prove state of, state of mind. Uh, you'll have attorneys after me that will can comment on that. But there's at least one, which is the mishandling of the federal documents, which is um, seems again a very strong case. They have a tape recording of him speaking of it. If that is proven, then we may have a candidate for president who has been convicted of a crime. Um, I think Joe Biden needs to be replaced, but I don't think Americans will vote for someone who's been convicted. Uh, so um, I, I, I'm just very sorry about how, how all this is playing out. 
Do you think that Donald Trump should drop out of the race? Uh, I think so. But obviously, that's up to him. I mean, you're just asking me my opinion. But I, but I, he will lose to Joe Biden if you look at the current polls. I'm a Republican. I think any Republican on that stage in Milwaukee will do a better job than Joe Biden. And so I want one of them to win. Uh, if, if former President Trump ends up get, getting the nomination but cannot win a general, uh, that means we'll have four more years of policies which have led to very high inflation, to a loss of purchasing power for the average American equivalent to $10,000, uh, and to many other things which I think have been deleterious to our country's future. So if Donald Trump does ultimately win the Republican nomination, uh, will you vote for Joe Biden or the Democrat over the Republican on the ticket? I'm going to vote for a Republican. But my threshold issue for any person who wants to be the leader of our country is will you take care of the issues before us? Both Biden and Trump both have the same policy on Social Security, for example, which is to do nothing. Unfortunately, Social Security is going insolvent in eight to nine years, which means that somebody watching this who's getting Social Security is going to get a 24 percent cut. Both former President Trump, President Biden are basically basically saying you're going to get a 24 percent cut because I'm not going to do anything. Now, my threshold issue, if you want to be a leader of our country, is to lead. And right now we need someone who will lead on that issue. Now, so Bill Cassidy couldn't answer the real question that the host asked correctly. She said, OK, do you think uh, uh, do you think Donald Trump should drop out of the race? Yes, he should. Good answer. Now, if he drops out of the race and he happens to be the Republican candidate, are you going to vote for him? Well, uh, I'm going to or are, are you going to vote for uh, El Senor Biden? Well, uh, I am going to vote for the Republican. In other words, he's saying if there's a Biden uh, Biden Trump race, he's still going to vote for Trump. He didn't say that, but that is by an inference. But let me tell you what makes it worse. She asks him, uh, he starts to say that there is no difference policy wise between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Of course, that's patently false. Donald Trump wasn't going to do all the social programs that uh, that we got Biden to do. He wouldn't have had the IRA. He wouldn't have had the student loan funds. He wouldn't have had any of those things. Right. Because that's not what the Republican orthodoxy stands for. So they are not the same. It's look, we can call Biden a neoliberal all we want, which is true. But he has come out with some good policies after after being rigged on by progressives in the party and they came to compromises. We didn't get all that we wanted, but you know what? I'll be saying I'm as progressive as left as one can get. And I am so surprised at the amount that we got. I'm talking about uh, home programs. I'm talking about domestic programs, what we've gotten from Biden. So they're not the same, but here you have Cassidy saying Biden and Trump are the same. So how can you say you don't that you don't think the American people will elect a a convicted felon? You don't want to elect a convicted felon. You claim that Donald Trump and Joe Biden are the same policy wise. So then if you don't want to elect a convicted felon and you think Donald Trump should get out of the race. And if Donald Trump still wins, you claim you're not going to vote for Biden. You're going to vote for the Republican. That just shows that you have. First of all, your words mean nothing. Your words mean absolutely nothing. Senator Cassidy, it shows that this has nothing to do with morality. This has nothing to do with law and order. This has nothing to do with anything other than all you want to ensure is that a Republican is in power, irrespective of whether that Republican is a felon or not. Yes, you would prefer that he's not a felon, but if your choice is between two guys that you claim are equal, one is a felon and the other isn't a felon, then you go ahead and still elect the felon. I tell you what, that, and I'm going to get a bit 
uh, personal here because there's a there's a statistic that that I saw on TV recently that really hurts to the core because you just proved a particular point. You gave a good example as to why our system is so screwed up. You are saying that some people, irrespective of what they do, get a pass in life. And that is exactly what you stand for. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel. And number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us, please join. Absolutely, folks. Please join, folks. Thank you so kindly. Bridge MCP says, it works, it works, it works. Robert Davenport say, woohoo, to Bridge MCP and all the progressives come who are uh, put up with a, a snucklehead man. <laughs> Look, guys, thank you so kindly for those super chats. It goes a long way to make sure we can keep doing what we're doing, guys. I appreciate the super chat. I appreciate the, I appreciate the subscriptions uh, to the... I appreciate the subscription to my newsletter. I appreciate the subscriptions to our, uh, what is it called again? Uh, tr Patreon. So if you want to help this program, if you want to make sure that we can continue uh, enlightening and, and also you being a part of this whole program, I ask you so kindly to contribute. And how do you contribute? You The main page that has all the different forms in which you can contribute is found at politicsdoneright.com slash support, politicsdoneright.com slash support. I have the link in the chat right now, but if you're listening on podcast, just go to politicsdoneright.com slash support and choose whatever method you have to support us, either going to our, mer our merch, going to uh, get our books, going ahead and getting our t-shirts, going ahead and becoming a member on Facebook, becoming a member on YouTube, becoming a member uh, of the newsletter, many different ways. But right this week, we we're pushing the newsletter. We haven't got a lot of bites, but we got a few. But please go ahead and consider subscribing to the newsletter at politicsandright.com slash newsletter or go to politicsandright.com slash support and support us in whatever manner you can. But mainly, politicsandright.com slash newsletter. Folks, I got to get out of here because I have an interview at 4.15. My name is Egberto Willis. I thank you. Let me, oh, let's see. Bree said, Trump is leading with Republicans. That in itself is sad. Forget Biden. This man has been guilty since the 70s. We in New York, as opposed to those who just knew him from a TV show, 2016 have known it for years. Wake up or yet be woke. Exactly. Robert Davenport says, woohoo, the British MCP and all progressive women who put up with us knucklehead men. Super chat did not allow me to purchase on my iPad. I don't know why that was the case, but you know what? I'm glad that you did. Thank you so kindly for supporting Politics and Right, my dear brothers and sisters. Please, we need a lot more support, so do as you can. I'm going to put that link in there one more time to the newsletter. Politicsandright.com slash newsletter is the way you can support us. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics and Right. And you guys know how I end this, baby. I am what? Out. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.